Hello, everyone. Good morning to some of you. Good afternoon. We're very happy that you are here today. We have the first uh, one of the design workshops for the Green Game Jam this year with Arno Payol, who is uh, art director at Ubisoft Positive Play. And um, I will just hand over the mic to him. He'll introduce himself in a little bit more detail and hopefully uh, all of you uh, will enjoy this workshop. Arno, over to you. Uh Thank you, Lisa. So, hi, everyone. Welcome to this first part of the design workshop series for the Green Game Jam 2024. I'm super excited by this year's theme, small action, big impact. It's by far the most ambitious outcome we've ever jammed toward, but it raised many questions for participants. What kind of action we're talking about? Why would players even want to take action in the real world? It's completely out of our control. How could we predict player will actually work their talk and do it? Going from intention to behavior, we all know there's a gap. And a very real concern, what if player hate it? Is there a risk to scare them away? So this is a reason for this design workshop series, to explore how well-designed games can transform their audience and make them want to take action in the real world. And it's actually easier to start from the end, the destination. So in this first part, we'll look together at what the unique impact potential of your game is to inspire action and determine what kind of action would resonate best with your player. Then next week, Clayton will help you understand your audience and how to bridge the gap between intention to action by, by unveiling science-based predictors of programmental behaviors. And finally, Trevin York will show you how to design specifically for your intended impact with large and small example of effective design for change. That's a lot to go through and I know your time is precious. So let's make the most out of this hour together and dive right in. And if you're wondering, who is this guy talking? So, hey, like Lisa said, I'm Arno Fayol. I've been making games for 18 years all around the world with wonderful teams, growing as successful art director, yet wondering if what I was doing was part of our climate change problem. So to become part of the solution instead, I co-founded the IDGA Climate Special Interest Group, an international community of game developers, academics, and climate scientists to explore the potential of video games to tackle the climate crisis, gathering nearly one and a half thousand members today. I also sidestepped from game production to join Ubisoft Positive Play, a transversal team tasked to demonstrate and amplify the positive power, the positive impact of video games on players and on the planet, where I now imagine new tools to support creatives in their quest for pro impact both within Ubisoft and across the industry via the Playing for the Planet Alliance. So as I worked with dozens of dev teams on their green activation, one thing became clear. Every game can be green. Every game can have a positive impact on the social and environmental crisis of our time, regardless of their theme, their genre, or their player base. However, not a single recipe can work with all of them, and it can be tricky to figure out what will work with your specific game. Tell your average Call of Duty player, come on, man, biodiversity is collapsing. What about we stop shooting virtual people and plant trees instead? That probably won't be very receptive. But come up with, hey, you are a warrior, you love fighting. So what about today we fight for a cause and we stop deforestation together? Now maybe they're listening. So as game maker, we're already done doing something similar. I'm sure you already went through grant lens to identify what's your game's USP, their unique selling points, right? So well, today we'll try to identify what's your game UIP, their unique impact potential. And we can triangulate it by looking at the game theme, what it'll talk about, the context of its world and characters, its gameplay, what do we ask players to do in game, and of course, its audience, who will play the game, and what is the context of their lives? Let's start with the theme. Game makers often wonder how their game could even speak about serious topics such as climate change. But climate change is much more complex than just managing our greenhouse gas emission. The causes are deeply rooted in everything that makes our modern civilization, and its consequences are affecting everything and everyone on the planet, which is great for us creative, as it means that whatever your game is about, there is always a way to connect it to relevant goals. To make sense of this, the United Nations have put together a plan with 17 sustainable development goals, which would allow us to restore balance on the planet. In previous Green Game Jam, it became clear that every game has one or several themes in common with them. Games with very specific themes were perfect to focus on specific issues like life below water in Hungry Shark. 
Other games like broader open world could expose players to a whole range of concepts like Riders Republics with their various activities. And usually the more systemic a game is, the more theme it can potentially address. City builders like Anno 1800 were perfect to let players experience how all those different themes are interconnected in our civilization. This year, the Green Game Jam is about activating players towards three specific goals. Food, how it can, how it can be produced or consumed more sustainably. Waste, how to reduce, reuse, repurpose, recycle our waste to tackle pollution issues. And restoration, how to repair and nurture ecosystems for biodiversity to flourish. You probably, you probably already have a good idea of what is your favorite theme. But for the sake of leaving no stone unturned and feel confident about our choices, let's explore these themes with the first hand-on activity. And to do so, I prepared lovely activity books for everyone. So if you have a Google account, you can use this first link that Lisa will share in the chat to create a copy uh, on your Google Drive so that you can share the address with your teammates if they are here with you and collaborate all on the same document. If you don't have a Google account, you can use the second link and save a local copy on your hard drive to edit it with PowerPoints. So I will leave you three minutes to set it up and then we'll go through all of this together. Does everyone have their document open? We should be, you should be in front of this page where you can write your game's lovely name if you fancy it and move to the first section where we'll evaluate how much each theme resonates with your team and your game. So what, first, what is your and your team's member journey towards this goal? You can place the red pin where you see fit be honest with yourself, uh, only you will see this document anyway, and it's much easier to work with a field you're already familiar with. And then you can ask yourself whether or not this theme already fits with existing features within your game, be there gameplay mechanics, aesthetics, such as uh, visual or music or anywhere in the narrative. So this first page is about food. The second one is about waste. The third one about biodiversity. And in the case none of these three themes feel familiar or relevant enough with your game, it's okay to explore something else. You can go on the last page of the first section where you can find a recap of all the UN Sustainable Development Goals that you can use if one of them resonates better with your game than any of the three official ones. I'll give you 10 minutes to uh, brainstorm on this first three to four page before jumping to the next topic. Have fun. All right, we're done. So can you please uh, come back to me? OK, now in this next part, we'll see how your gameplay can inspire action. Everyone agrees that we need to act. We need a change. The only problem is that nobody agrees on what action is the most relevant to start with. Some claim that we should change individually, do our part, learn to live with less, renew our connection with nature, and abandon a broken system. In a world, learn to live sustainably. Others say that we should rely on our strong institution, government, and corporation to collectively transform our planet-crushing system into something that could sustain itself for centuries, in short, transforming the system. Others even say that we should all be in the streets right now, holding our ground against those who destroy our planet for profit with love and rage, in short, resisting against the planet destruction. So who should we trust? There are so many good people out there trying to convince other good people that their way should be more efficient than the others, and the fear of advocating for the wrong solution can paralyze us. So to schematize, those three action paths could be mapped that way, seemingly going in different direction. But it's actually closer to an ecosystem as each path benefits the other two. Living sustainably helps those we're trying to transform the system by proving that there's a demand for it and act as a point of reference for those resisting against the planet destruction. 
by transforming the system, we create new sustainable alternatives for those who wish to live sustainably. And we set new benchmarks for future regulation that allow the resistance to take legal action. And when we resist against the planet destruction, we send a strong signal to governments and corporations that inaction won't be tolerated anymore, helping all employees working hard to transform the system from, the in, from within, as well as protecting the condition of life of those willing to live sustainably. So you see, everything is connected. We can safely inspire actions in all three axes, knowing that their outcome will meet up at some point. But how to know which axe is best for our players? This is where we look at our gameplay. Where does our, what does our game task player to do? What are we encouraging and what are we punishing? It's easy to notice that some game genres have a natural potential to nudge players in specific directions. Game about real life activities, low carbon sport, relationship with animals or the natural world can inspire players' sustainable way to live. Games featuring systemic civilization are perfect to inspire society transformation. Even games about high carbon activities like car racing can aim at setting an examples, the way Trackmania does by showcasing an electric car rather than a petrol one. Actions, combat, and shooting games can also lead the resistance against our planet destruction. We just need to clarify what we're fighting for or what we're fighting against. So what does your game task player to do? Let's come back to our activity deck and move to the gameplay section. Now let's ask ourselves what action verbs best describe your game experience in general. Not for this specific activation, just your regular gameplay. What is it that your players seek and enjoy while playing your game? I've scribbled some action verb on the action map on the left. So once you've identified a few good ones that resonate with you, feel free to move the red pin in the area that feels the most relevant for your game. And once you have pinpointed which acts match your gameplay the most, think about what real life action towards your chosen theme would fit this direction. You will know when you have a good one, when you think, oh yes, I bet my players would love doing that right after playing my game. So again, let's take five minutes for this quick exercise before moving on. All right, can I get your attention again for one more moment? So let's now look at the last key part of the puzzle, who your audience is and why are they playing your game? I'm sure you already know a lot about your audience, maybe more than you can even admit. The average age, genders, location, gaming habits, but what we will look for is where they stand on their pro-environmental journey. Are they still ignoring the problem by accident or by choice? Are they already aware of the crisis but aren't acting yet? Or are they already actively involved in making the world more sustainable? Depending on our genre and theme, the proportion of each segment amongst our audience will vary. We can imagine a niche game about foraging in the wild to be mostly played by actively involved nature lovers, while a highly main mainstream game played by a billion players may have a bigger proportion of unaware people. So we can adapt our speech to our audience. Another interesting consideration is how much agency your audience have on their own life choice. It's one thing to ask receptive adults to change their habits or chip some money for a good cause, but it's much harder if your game targets young audience who live with their parents and have no access to money. But they can still contribute to outreach and community building and spread the world around them so that people with more agency can take action. Similarly, Players without prior interest in saving the planet who won't really be interested in taking action just for the sake of it. So instead, we can tell them everything about the co-benefits of these actions. Yes, changing your diet is better for your own health. And yes, avoiding wasting power can make you save money and so on. And when your audience is neither interested nor have agency, it's even more crucial to leverage the fun to subtly raise awareness and educate without being preachy. Who cares about the cause in the end, as long as we're having fun, right? One last variable approach is to consider your players' motivations. Why are they playing your game? Quantic Foundry's motivational clusters model can be a good starting point here. If different gamers play for different reasons, they will be motivated by different activities, both within the game and outside the game. So for example, to tackle trash issues, 
social players may be interested in cleaning garbage just for the sake of the community, like in Alba Wildlife Adventure. Players from the mastery cluster would be more excited in how reusing can optimize their lifestyle, like in the game Under the Waves, where collecting used oxygen cans can let you build new ones and optimize gameplay. And creative players would love to discover many creative ways to upcycle their garbage into pieces of art, like in Yoshi's Crafted World. So let's switch back to our activity desk and think about how would this apply to your audience. Let's take some time to think about your players. Where do, we ex where do you expect them to be on their programmatical journey toward the theme you have in mind? How much agency they have over their own life choice, depending on their demographic? What are their main motivations for playing your game? Of course, you will always have a mixed bag. But maybe you can think of where the majority could be, or at least the one you plan to address with, too, with your green activation, even if it means disregarding the other for now. So place your, place your red pins accordingly, and then think about how this consideration would affect your player's will and ability to take action. Let's take 10 minutes for this. Go. I'm not sure to understand the, uh, the fourth point, um, uh, 3.D. Can you uh, re-explain? The, the, what do you mean, the last point? Yeah, the last point, please. OK. Um, I mean, considering like when, when you think of where their player might be, you can start to imagine how they would react to, um, to the, the activation you, are, uh, you have in mind. For example, we, we've seen in the past, uh, yeah, when uh, in the Green Game Jam, uh, one of the KPI was to generate as much money as possible for a good cause, for a, an NGO. And uh, we ended up with one team who, feel, who felt blocked because they, uh, they realized halfway through that uh, their audience, most of their audience was really young. So they couldn't, they didn't have access to a to credit card uh, or anything. So they couldn't use this uh, this leverage. They wouldn't be able to meet this KPI. And by thinking of this, by thinking this consideration early on, they would have been able to come up with different KPIs that would have uh, allowed them to uh, to succeed much better, avoid wasting time, and uh, being able to put uh, all their uh, all their time and uh, and their creativity into a, into a better direct direction. This is why. Um, well, this is just a. This field here is just a, a note for you to um, to think about. Uh, yeah, how the those uh, three different considerations might impact uh, the way you conceive your activation or the way you decide about uh, what action you can realistically expect your player to take, or um, uh, how willing they would be uh, to uh, to do that. Is it clear? I have another question. When you look at players' motivations, I feel like many games have a different, or many games have different type of audiences and yes. groups or cohorts of people that play for different reasons. Absolutely. Would you suggest then, in this case, if there are, I don't know, two or three main motivations for people to play the game, to adjust your messaging on the green activation, or? do do you go with one messaging that appeals to the bigger group i think i think there are different there are different possible strategies um so you're completely right most games have a, a different audience and often when we are um when we are measuring uh, our uh, our target audience we often end up with a split between uh, between different groups so i think by Acknowledging those groups, we can either uh, focus on the the biggest one, if it's like by far the, the biggest one, and find something that they would like, or maybe we can come up with uh, different uh, with an activation that targets different groups with different actions, uh, like a 
oh, maybe you could do this or that, like give players three choice of action uh, to undertake based on the based on a, a three different motivator motivation groups. Uh, or also, if we are, we could also work, uh, think differently by thinking, would any of those group react badly to uh, the activation I'm about to ask? Because that can be the case, right? If uh, if the if I don't know a one game has a heavy action, but also uh, something creative, and you go with something that's only about creativity, maybe you the the action player might react badly. And we're often <laughs> developers are often scared about the action group because they are the most viscerally vocal, especially on, on social media. So it could be also something to take into consideration. If we think like, OK, I know I have a lot of players in this cluster, so what can I come up so that I don't trigger them? It was a good question. Thanks. Thank you. I have one more question. So in 3A, where you expect your audience to be on their pro environmental journey, I think a lot of uh, studios this year are joining for the first time. They may not really have looked into this at all or not know very much about how players feel about this uh, specific topic. Would you, would you then suggest to make an assumption, given that there's probably not a whole lot of time to figure out and get in touch with your audience trying to understand how they feel about this and maybe this is this is a first activation that happens in the game that allows people to uh, come to an understanding of what their audience uh, uh, pro personal uh, personal pro environmental uh, stance stance is how would you approach that yeah absolutely so um, it's a uh, it's also a very good point so I think we can I could give exactly the same answer as uh, with uh, with the motivation. Either we take we take a guess or an educated guess based on the the, the theme of our uh, of the game. We can, I think, we can. Uh, the more um, salient the pro environment pro environmental theme are in our game, the more we can expect that players who will be um, who will come to our game will be the one who are uh, already sensitive to a, to a topic, who are already uh, eco-conscious. But if the game has absolutely no uh, environmental consideration to start with, it's probably best to um, uh, assume that we'll have a very, uh, very mixed bag with maybe a lot of uh, players in the in the first category in the that they're unaware of the problem and need to be subtly nudged <laughs> into a, into a, uh, getting more acquainted with the topic. So again, I will be careful about uh, not triggering players who may be uh, adverse to the to a pro environmental consideration. Avoid uh, making them feel like they were playing a game and now they're in a pla they're in a classroom. It's not a game anymore because nobody wants that. They are here because they wanted to play games. They want to have fun. So let's focus on the <laughs> the fun first and uh, and sneak the education in a uh, in the way we we can. And then it will be a good way to uh, to measure the rest. And again, I think it's uh, depending of how much um, uh, how much firepower you have in uh, in your team. It can be all right to have some main goals and some optional goals as well. Like uh, think about the main quest, which is something like very subtle, uh, just to get everyone to talk about the topic, just to get everyone in and and uh, um, fill the water. And uh, you can think about an optional quest or something that only the most involved people will like to do, but that won't be in the way of people who don't want to engage with that. Oh no, do we have a minute for me to add on to that answer? Please do. So every, everything Arno just said is an incredibly good answer to that question, but I just want to provide like a foundation. In a, in a scenario where you don't have any time or resources for any market research, you have no real idea about how your target gameplay audience is thinking about this because you've never looked into this before. That's totally fine. Let me give you a couple of resources that can be a foundation and baseline. First, we've got the Unity L study on just general game players' attitudes and perceptions around climate and action. And then more recently, from just a couple months ago, 
we've got this study on global attitudes, on uh, attitudes towards not just awareness, but also climate action and response. And that one is neat. And I'm putting these links in the chat. And that one is neat because they do break down the data by uh, region. So if you know what regions your players are in, that can kind of help give you a foundation. Again, none of this is a replacement for a market research and understanding of your actual player base, but it's 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 nice to have. It's better than it's better than nothing. You don't have to start from scratch. Yeah, brilliant. Thank thank you so much for uh, for sharing. So yeah, please guys ensure you uh, you save those links somewhere because. Uh, when the at the end of the meeting the, the chat will disappear so let's save it somewhere they are both uh, quite long read but very very variable so ensure you don't lose them okay so we're almost done it's time for the big finale let's put everything together and formulate the unique impact potential of your game for the green game jam 2024 so We've discussed how your game aesthetics, narrative, and mechanics can connect with the Green Game Jam theme, uh, how your gameplay can inspire action toward living sustainably, transforming the system, or resisting against the planet destruction, and how your choice of action must take into account your audience, pro environmental journey, agency, and motivation. No other games have the same combination of theme, gameplay, and audience, which is why your impact potential is unique. No other game can achieve what you can achieve. So, on the next page of your activity deck, you'll find a template to fill up with all your findings and formulate your UIP. This should be easy enough, but if you need more inspiration, here is what it could have looked like if the last game I worked on was participating in the Green Game Jam this year, which unfortunately it doesn't. So my game, The Division 2, is perfectly suited to inspire our audience, North American and European adults, motivated by social activities and mastering systems to engage in resisting against the planet's destruction toward food and water security. Therefore, it has a unique potential to activate players toward opposing the privatization of public freshwater reserve and building rainwater collectors for their community. That sounds like something Division 2 players will enjoy. At least it really fits with the fantasy of their game. What do you think? Um, and if you can't stand fitting in boxes, which I absolutely understand, the next page of your book is for you to formulate it just the way you like. Just make sure you keep it concise, specific, and grounded in your game theme, gameplay, and audience. So we'll just take five minutes for this, and then we'll have some time to share with the group if you feel like it. Okay, all right. So, if this hour together was valuable, you must have discovered some unique potential for your game to trigger real world action. And therefore, you're ready to join the video game Climate Resistance. Please step up. I would love to hear your findings, and I'm sure everyone else too, as your games are so inspiring. So, is anyone up for it? I had actually a question. No one was talking, so I just thought I'll jump in if I can ask a question. Um, Carlo, um, with from Amazon Games as well is in the cloud. And one of the challenge we are facing is for PC games, where you can't really influence the content that much. So you really has, you have to work with what is in the game because we can't really add new content, which means we have to go with something that is more community led. Um, it's not that easy to find really good examples to inspire us of things that uh, have been done. And I know Carlo asked Lisa, about it and I know most of the games are mobile game but I was just wondering if no one has anything that they want to share could you maybe give us some inspiration have you seen really good stuff like is there a best in class that you could tell us that it isn't mobile game so uh, what we've seen on uh, like small activation on console when we can't really change the content and we only have community what we've done with Forza Horizon 4 we had uh, environment photography to there was a photography uh, tool in the game for players to use, and we had a lot of great photographers in Forza. So we asked them to uh, just photograph the best, the place they like the most in the in the world of Forza Horizon 4. And we went through great lens to really represent nature in its utmost beauty and accuracy. And so even if it's a car game, if you zoom, you can see like all the the 
the uh, bramble uh, changing with the season, having like the color of the leaves, having like a, a small blackberries appearing, all these kind of things. There are like tons of hidden details, and by pushing players to just interact with the natural world of the game, uh, it gives them a new lens to look at the game and look at nature in a different way. And once they start to take this habit in the game, this will translate easily in real life whenever they come close to some natural environment. Uh, we had something like this we tried with uh, with Just Dance to engage some community to uh, uh, dance in the woods and uh, like a film self self dancing on Just Dance choreography uh, in nature and uh, and sharing with uh, with players. So this was all um, a good excuse to uh, to uh, to send people. Uh, uh, do stuff, <laughs> do stuff outside, and and uh, showcase that. Great, we can we we, we can you. we can discuss more. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we might pick pick your brain. Thanks, Arno. John, you were uh, you are ready to present? Please go ahead. Uh, I uh, share my screen. Uh, whatever you like, or you can just. Uh, uh, just I read my uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, my game it's uh, Virtual Regatta Offshore. It's a perfectly sweet suited to inspire our audience, uh, very old adult Central European, uh, motivated by mastery and immersion, to engage uh, in getting involved in cleaning up the ocean and the uh, waste continent uh, toward a waste race. Uh, therefore, is, uh, it has a unique potential to activate player to ward, a race with unique features, collecting trash, and a different plot, uh, be the one who collects the most waste and uh, makes the largest continent of waste disappear. And uh, I would like, but I'm not sure we can, uh, by playing a collecting race, uh, I would like it's such an, uh, an impact on a win on, in, a win in a real life, sorry. <laughs> That's super cool. Thanks for sharing. So uh, just some closing thoughts. Uh, so yeah, next Thursday, Clayton Whittle will pick up exactly where we are right now and will help you understand your audience to bridge the gap between intention and action by unveiling science-based predictors of pro-environmental behavior. Then in two weeks, Trevin York, who's right here, will show you how to design specifically for your intended impact with large and small example of effective design for change. You'll have everything you need to move forward in producing your activation with a confidence that your intention will inspire a player to take action. Thank you so much, and don't hesitate to reach out if I can help.